The space shuttle Discovery is set for launch in less than three minutes. Despite the problems with the weather earlier in the morning, they managed to find a hole between thunderstorms that they're actually going to try to go up through. They did have a problem uh, a little while ago with a ship that was in the impact area of the solid rocket boosters, but that ship has now been moved out of the area and everything is go for launch. The countdown has been progressing very, very smoothly. They have uh, been on again, off again uh, for the last couple of hours because of the weather problems. Uh, they only have a, a fairly short window of about 40 minutes to uh, make the launch this morning to rendezvous with the CINCOM satellite later this week. Before they do that, they of course will launch three communication satellites and uh, one for Australia, one for a private business uh, concern here in the United States, and another for the Hughes Corporation, which will be a U.S. Navy satellite. 15 seconds, and the liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. The countdown uh, still continuing. Coming uh, up on the one minute point in, in our the, countdown. Uh, center of the screen T is the main one engine tank of the Discovery. The system for the sound suppression water system is armed. And the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. Uh, these devices ensure that any free hydrogen uh, will not build up to uh, cause a small explosion at engine ignition. T minus 40 seconds in counting. This is the third attempt to launch Coming Discovery. On Saturday, it was scrubbed because of the weather problems. Then they tried again on Sunday, and it was scrubbed because of a computer failure. They decided to give it one day rest and then come again this Tuesday morning. on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds up to launch. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of A51I and a commercial deploy and repair mission. It has cleared the tower. Roger, roll, Discovery. Roll program initiated. Houston now controlling. Roger that. Beginning throttle down now to 65 percent. Three engines throttling down now to 65 percent. Altitude three nautical miles. Three engines in the throttle down condition to manage the uh, maximum aerodynamic pressure as the uh, spacecraft approaches uh, max Q at 743 pounds per square foot. Three engines now running at 104 uh, percent, giving a go at the throttle of one minute, 20 seconds, velocity 3,200 feet per second, altitude 11 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Three APUs running normally, three good fuel cells operating. One minute, 40 seconds, velocity 4,400 feet per second. Altitude 18 nautical miles, downrange distance 16 nautical miles. So Discovery has left the launch pad. This was sort of a birthday present, present one day late for Commander Joe Engel. He celebrated his 53rd birthday yesterday, and just before he left with about 30 seconds remaining on the clock, he told mission controllers, we're ready to get out of Dodge, an indication of uh, some of the concern of being uh, earthbound two times, bringing the count down uh, below nine minutes. Uh, when they had the problems launching uh, on Saturday and on Sunday. The mission is scheduled to end on the 2nd of September. This will follow the launching of three satellites. So you just heard the first stage performance is nominal, so they are uh, well on their way to uh, their planned orbit.
They will be launching three satellites on three successive days, uh, starting today with the first one, which will be the American Satellite Company. Uh, we will not have any pictures of that, uh, unfortunately, until tomorrow, uh, when they will launch a second satellite for the Australians, and then they will launch a LESAT satellite on the third day. From that point on, they will be rendezvousing with the ailing SINCOM satellite that was launched in April unsuccessfully that has been floating in a useless orbit since then. And we, will, of course, will have continuing coverage of the Discovery mission throughout the week here on CNN. We'll have more news in just a moment. Stay with us. Latest now from Bruce Hall. Bruce? Good, good morning, Faith. It was the situation that NASA said that they were going to attempt. That is, if there was a break in the weather, they were going to try to launch. And this morning it rained for about four hours here at the Kennedy Two, Space Center. One. Then there was a break, and off it went. And liftoff. Liftoff of A-51I and the commercial deploy and repair mission. It has cleared the tower. Roger. It really was a case of having a break in the weather because here at the press center, three miles away from the actual launch pad, it was still raining at liftoff. And that is one of the things they cannot launch if it is actually raining at the pad area. So they had the break that they had been watching on radar. The entire area has been covered with rain this morning, but the meteorologist said that there was going to be a small hole that they thought would move into the area and that they might get a, a little break sometime during that 45-minute launch period. They got that break, and they're off. And now it is a case where they'll be in space for eight days. They'll deliver three commercial satellites and attempt that daring rescue of the ailing dormant satellite in about six days. Okay, Faith? thank you very much. Bruce Hall from the Kennedy Space Center. And we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of A51I and the commercial... Deploy and repair mission. It has cleared the tower. So the shuttle Discovery found a break in the clouds at the Cape this morning and lifted off minutes ago. The third launch attempt since Saturday and this third time was the charm. Bad weather had dogged the Cape again, rain falling periodically, but the shuttle made it through layers of thick clouds. Tucked away in the cargo bay there are three new satellites for launching. And in the mission's plan, the jump-starting of another satellite now stranded uselessly in orbit. This is Daybreak on CNN for Tuesday, August 27. With Reed Collins in Washington and Marianne Laughlin and Bob Kane in Atlanta. Good morning. Well, for the third time since Saturday, the sign at the Kennedy Space Center said out to launch, and they meant it this time. Let's get the latest in Tom Mentier in Atlanta. Tom? Well, that sign may be hanging, but they've left the launch area now. About seven minutes ago, Discovery is now almost ready to make its orbit, which will be about 190 nautical miles from Earth, where they will sit for a week, launching three satellites and repairing another. This is the view from the Kennedy Space Center about eight minutes ago, as Discovery left the pad after fighting the weather and some problems earlier in the week. Two attempts to launch Discovery uh, on Saturday and Sunday were aborted, one for the weather and one for a computer problem. Roger, roll, Discovery. Roll program initiated, Houston now controlling. Roger that. Beginning throttle down now to 65%. They are now uh, about eight minutes into the uh, run of the uh, discovery, and uh, the launch delays that they've gone through, uh, the, the two that they were not able to launch, to cost NASA about $785,000 each time uh, in fuel and, and overtime. But uh, the fuel and the overtime are now being used, and discovery is on its way. They will spend seven days in space, coming back on September the 2nd. During the seven days, they will launch three satellites and repair another. It is the repair of the satellite which made the launch time critical, and they will rendezvous on the sixth day of the, uh, or fifth, between the fifth and the sixth day of the mission to repair that satellite. And of course, we will have continuing coverage here on CNN. 